What's up guys, Dan from the Headwaters Kayak Shop and I'm out in front of our local Dick Sporting Goods here in Redding, California. So what I'm gonna do today is bring you guys along. I'm gonna buy five kayaks under or in the $200 range and I'm gonna go to the lake and review them. We're gonna talk about them. I'm gonna let you guys know what you're getting for your money. Is something worth buying? Is something not worth buying? And give you guys my honest review. So let's get into it. All right, we're rolling in here and they've actually got a pretty decent selection compared to the Dick's and Lodi. It's a hallway of kayaks right here. I'm over here listening to the guy's sales pitch and I'm just like, pulling out my hair about the ignorance that these customers are getting spitted right now. It's unreal. Sit on top here. This one's uh, 40 pounds. It's got the Bandit 100. 199. So I think I'm going to pick this one up. This one looks cute. It's got a little front storage compartment. Seat. Zipper bag in the back. Rod holders. That one's 279. A little bit about the budget where I wanted to be, but I think I'm going to pick that one up just because it seems like it would be a popular one colors looks like pink and then this one's like a blue green i'm gonna go with the pink though i don't know why all right we got the pelic or perception swifty 9.5 we've actually reviewed that one before i'm gonna throw one in the video too though because it's under 300 and i think it's a really good boat for the price so here you guys go this is going to be the blade check this one out 159 it looks like it's rotomolded. molded uh, it's got a nice hole design i think i'm going to pick this one up too that brings us up to four Mike's gonna help me pick one more boat. And for my last one, you guys, I decided to just get this one, the 189 Pelican, because, I don't know, they're just so deep on them. I see a ton of these around, the Trailblazer 100. I'm gonna grab one of those. I think we'll go for, let's go with the lime green. I'm a lime green guy. All right, you guys, here's my five. Thank you so much, it was Mike, right? Yeah, yeah. anytime, Mike man, Dan. have fun. Yeah. Pull out, look in your hand, pack them out. Are you in the trailer? Yeah, that's my trailer right out there. All right. There's a protection plan I can get on any kind. There is a protection plan pricing right there. Okay, so $29.99, you guys, if you for have two any, years for any issues with your seats, your straps, your hatches, whatever. Any, any of the stuff that you bolt on, you know, it's bolted yeah. onto, any of that stuff tears out, it's covered. Not, it doesn't cover normal wear and tear if you're banging it on the rock. Right, right, if you're dragging it, it's not going to cover that. Okay, cool. so I got to say, you guys, this uh, shopping experience was way better than my last Dick Sporting Goods experience. Uh, the guy was super, super nice. He didn't have all the answers, but he didn't pretend like he did either. And, uh, you know, I told him the whole story. I introduced myself and, you know, he introduces a lot of people into paddle sports. So hopefully we can educate them about our shop. So when people want something a little nicer or when they want to learn about community events and stuff like that, they can send them our way. So I'm going to go, I'm going to first line them up and I'm going to walk you guys through the different boats, why I picked them. And then next I'll go hit the water and uh, let you guys know how they paddle. Oh, there it is. So we're actually outside of Reading today. We took a drive about 45 minutes up the hill from Reading to the east, and we're just at the base of Mount Lassen at a little pg &E lake called Lake McCumber. Uh, this is a great summer escape from Reading heat because it does get hot in Reading, you know, 105 degrees yesterday, and it's probably 75 up here this morning. And I feel like it's a great place to test the boats because this is probably going to be the kind of lake that most people are going to use these basic kayaks, you know, when they have the picture in their mind of what am I going to do with my kayak? I want to do flat water lakes. I want to go, you know, camping and have a kayak just to paddle around whatever campground I'm at. So behind me, I've got the five kayaks I picked up, ranging from the least expensive to the most expensive. The least expensive being the Blade, 10 foot at 159. Um, the next up is the Pelican Trailblazer 100. This one was 189 on sale. Then we have the Pelican Bandit, which is a 10 footer, and it was the only sit on top they had under $300. And next up was the Pelican Mustang. That one came in at $279. It got some upgrades like the bag in the back, the knee pads, a little front hatch. And then lastly is a Perception Swifty 9.5. And that one is a heavy duty rotor molded construction. We've actually reviewed that one in the past and thought it was a good value for the price. Now that we've seen it come under 300 bucks at that, I think it was a 289 price point. Um, we had to put that one back in today's review. So we're gonna get these things on the water, you guys. I'm gonna test them out for you. The first kayak I'm gonna paddle today is a Pelican Trailblazer. This is the one that I see everywhere on top of every car in town. So I wanted to just give it a shot, paddle it around and see how it felt. Uh, and I am using the, the molded foot pedals in this boat, the ones that have notches. And I gotta say, for me and my height, it fits me just perfect. Um, I think if you were in between sizes, you might find your knees to be way up or your legs to be straight out, but I'm able to get mine pretty solid. Now I will say that if you look at my, my knees in the cockpit, there's no padding on the outside of my knees, so you're kind of just against the plastic, but it is rounded off, so it's not too bad. Feet are on the foot pedals. You want a little bit of a bend in your knee. You don't want your legs straight out, 
because that's going to make you feel tippy. You also want your backrest, if you can see that. See how I'm sitting nice and upright? I'm not kicked back. If you're kicked back, you're going to be less stable. You want to push your butt all the way back in that seat so you have a nice upright position. Feet against the foot pedals. Now I'm ready to go paddling. I love this little lake. Off to my east is Mount Lassen. We're about eight miles from the park entrance. And so you're just paddling around next to these white cat peaks. And it's just beautiful. You know, as I paddle around, it's so beautiful and it's so calm. You forget what kayak you're in. It almost it doesn't matter. For this kind of water, where it's flat, you're at a small lake. This is probably, you know, a, I, don't, I don't know, a couple hundred acre lake. Not a big lake. And it's almost always flat calm. This is a fine tool for the job. I think a lot of kayak shops like mine, independent shops, tend to want to look down and talk bad about these kayaks. Call them, you know, coffins, you know, Costco coffins or bathtub boats. But I think if you're being realistic in what you're wanting to use the boat for and not going to running white water or not going, you know, on big lakes or open water, I think you can be completely satisfied with a boat like this. So if we're talking stability, I'm the boat rocks and rolls to its secondary, but I definitely wouldn't say it's unstable. Now I have paddled the Aruba SS. I have one of those as well. And I purposely didn't put it in this review. I should maybe. Uh, but Dix doesn't sell them, Walmart sells them, and those boats are tippy. I, I highly recommend looking elsewhere. If you're looking at that Aruba or that Walmart style boat, here's a boat that's basically the same price, you know, under 200 bucks, that is head and shoulders better paddling, more stable, more forgiving, will fit a broader range of people. Buy this one over the Sun Dolphin Aruba any day of the week. So as I speed this boat up, you'll notice that just a big old bow wake starts coming off the bow. It doesn't want to go fast. This boat's for leisure paddling. If you start getting this thing going fast, the bow wake piles up on the front and you're not going to go anywhere in any sort of efficiency. So if you're buying this boat, just think of it as you are buying a toy yak. You know, an easy to paddle at two miles an hour, close to shore. You're going to go for a couple, you know, an hour, two hours, putts around on a lake like this and you're going to have a great time. If you want more out of the sport, if you want to go, you know, five, six miles, and you want to paddle in some wind and some chop, or maybe you want to run a local class one river, look for something that's a little bit more sophisticated, something that has bulkheads, safety features, maybe a little bit more, more length and keel that's going to help you going straighter. And expect to spend, you know, five, six hundred bucks on something that's appropriate for that kind of water. Again, it's not that this is a bad boat, because it's definitely not. I feel comfortable and having a great time, but knowing your boat's limitations is the most important part. So I'm a fan. I like this boat. I think it's totally fine. I think, you know, the outfitting on it is a little bit disposable in the Trailblazer, but uh, for an entry-level kayak at 189 bucks, if it gets you in the sport, you're not going to hate it. One thing that does concern me is the really low back tank well. The fact that if water comes over here, it's going to go straight into my cockpit and flood the kayak. And the fact that this kayak has no flotation means if water's inside, this thing is sinking or at least sinking up to the gunnels and you're having to swim home. And the last thing that I hope it goes without saying, when we're talking boats like this, these boats are not safe if you flip them over. These boats fill up with water. So always, always, always wear your life jacket. Again, on a lake like today, worst case, if I flip this thing over, I would be floating this high. I'd float back to shore or swim back to shore. I could probably drag my kayak or worst case, I'm gonna get back safe. But if I don't have this little device on, I'm gonna be in a world of trouble because I can't depend on this boat for my flotation. You should always, always wear a life jacket no matter what water you're in, no matter what boat you're paddling, but especially if you're in one of these little sit-in sides. All right, so that's uh, that's the Trailblazer. Next, I'm gonna hop in that little Bandit sit on top. Try that one out. All right, so now I'm in the Bandit sit on top and uh, this one's not quite as cozy as the uh, Trailblazer. The seat's a little, I mean, I guess it's the same height, but it feels a little bit more flimsy on this one. Uh, maybe it's an adjustment thing, or maybe it's just how I sit with my legs a little bit more straight out in front of me. Again, with the molded foot pedals. And here's a good example of this one's too close. This one I feel a little bit too far. I'd, I'd love to be right here, but again, there's no foot pedal. So, you know, sit in them in the store, make sure they work good for you. Um, but the thing I do like about the sit on top is, again, water can come up over the deck. It's going to drain right out here through the scupper holes. It's a lot safer boat. And if I was paddling with my family, I would probably be putting them in sit-on tops just for that safety aspect 
of knowing, hey, if they flip over, they can flip it back up and climb back on. You know, I was a kid not that long ago, and I remember being on Silver Lake and flipping over my Kiwi kayak, which was a sit inside, and that thing filled to the brim. And I remember having to swim that thing back, and it was, I don't want to say it was traumatic, but it was definitely a, a scary learning experience. Whereas if I had to sit on top, I would have just flipped it over and then back to paddling, no big deal. So as I paddle, I don't know if you can hear, this one take, requires more effort to push through the water. So when you sit on top, you elevate your center of gravity up a little bit. So the boats tend to have to be a little bit wider to compensate. And uh, it definitely feels a little wider. So same length, 10 foot, but another couple inches wider. And it makes this boat a little bit harder to handle. Man, I just look out here and I'm just seeing trout crush top water all over. And I don't have my rod again. I should be out here fly fishing today. But instead, I'm doing this for you guys and I'm happy to do it because hopefully this means you guys are gonna get out on the water and come experience some of this beauty for yourself. I get plenty of room behind me. If I wanted to bring a kid or a small dog, this would be a good one for that. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap it up in this one. I think from a safety aspect, I really like the idea of this boat for something under $200 that you can be safe with. If you wanted to go float a river or something like that, this boat's gonna serve you better than the Trailblazer. Next, why don't we jump in why don't we jump that little 159 field and stream blade kayak? It looks inexpensive on the outside, but I know a hole design when I see it, and I really like the looks of that hole design, so let's try it out. I'm a little bit concerned about how my 34-inch uh, legs are going to fit into that little tiny cockpit, but we'll give it a shot here. This one's got that, those nice adjustable foot pedals in there, so that shouldn't be a problem with my leg length. Yeah, that was my concern right there, you guys. Look at that. So if you're a taller person, this isn't the boat for you. I'm gonna get in and paddle it, but if I'm being honest, this would be so uncomfortable to paddle because look, my knees are just right at the front of that cockpit. There's no padding. I already know I would pick the Trailblazer over this one, no matter how good it paddles, if you're a bigger guy. Now let's try it out and see how it does and just talk about performance. Because if you're a smaller person, you know, that's not gonna be a problem and you're gonna be out of the way. So let's see how she goes here. So I've got some of my friends and colleagues that think I'm nuts for doing these videos and you know, selling dick sporting goods, hundreds and hundreds of boats. But you know what? You guys are buying boats anyway from somewhere. And I always tell people an independent shop like mine, we're probably not gonna be somebody's first kayak shop. We're gonna be their second kayak shop. If somebody wants to get into the sport and wants to just spend $200, $300 to see if they like it, they're gonna be buying something like this. If they fall in love with the sport, which I think you will out here on a place like this, then guess what? You're gonna be back to see me and say, hey, I want a good kayak. I want something that I can, you know, do class two rivers in, or I can go longer, I can go harder, I can put my camping gear in. Whatever niche you decide you wanna pursue, that's where I come in with knowledge, with expertise, with selection, um, and I can help dial in the boats. But if I'm inspiring you right now or motivating you to get out on the water and try kayaking, then that's really my job. That's what I'm more excited about than selling a boat. And long-term, if you're getting into the sport and you're excited about it, there's always gonna be a need for a pro shop like Headwaters or whatever pro shop you have in your local town. So again, you guys, I'm in the Blade Field and Stream model. This is their little sit inside, and I picked it up for $159. Um, it's got a nice seat in it. I would say out of the Pelican versus this, the seat is a little bit higher, a little more supportive. I also really like how in the back it's got a tank well, but it's also got this little hump that's gonna keep the water out of my cockpit. So a little bit more versatile, a little bit more safe and it paddles really nice. You got a little dragonfly landing on me there. This boat has really nice glide. I think that whoever designed this boat had to be the same person that designed the original Wilderness Systems Pungo because it looks eerily similar from the waist down as a Pungo, just way more simplified. But the whole DNA is really what matters. I mean, what, how a boat paddles, glides, turns, how stable it is, all has to do with how someone designed the boat. And the fact that it's roto-molded means you can get a lot more complex contours and design out of a boat as opposed to the Pelican sheet mold. Um, so, hmm. my only complaint is the leg room. This thing has the adjustable foot pedal, so it's got better foot pedals, better seat, better hold performance, a little bit heavier, but not bad. The only downside for me is just those those knees there being so close to that cockpit. So again, if you're six foot and under, 
I don't think you'd have a problem with it. But if you're a bigger guy like me, I'm 6'2", 230, you're gonna feel a little bit crammed into the cockpit of this thing. With that said, now that I'm on the water, this is my favorite one out of the bunch so far. This thing paddles really nice. I cannot believe that they can make a kayak that is $159. That one, that they can make a profit at it, but two, that they can make something that paddles as nice as this thing does. Uh, the outfitting is where you get into your additional cost. So if you can live without some of the creature comforts, you can still get into a boat that paddles really nice at a basic price point. And you can get into the sport for 200 bucks. For, for this boat, this paddle, I guess you need a life jacket. So let's say 250 bucks. And you're into the sport and you're out here, you're doing this. Um, I don't know. I don't think, I don't see how that could be bad. I guess where it could be bad is if, you, if you're taking the boat into inappropriate water. If you're taking the boat into waters that it shouldn't be in, open water, waves, things like that, this boat doesn't belong there. This is a flat water, close to shore, recreational kayak. And as long as you know that, man, you're gonna have a good time. The other thing that you should invest in if you're thinking about a boat like this, invest in some float bags. They're basically little triangle shaped bags that you jam up into the nose, you jam into the stern and blow them up. And they basically fill up the otherwise dead space that would fill with water and give you a lot of buoyancy. So if I were to flip over out here, now I have a nice buoyant boat that I could hold on to that I can potentially empty the water out or use a bilge pump and bail the water out and then get back in and paddle to shore. Again, without that, I've got a cockpit full of water all the way to the brim and I'm not, get, I'm not getting this thing to shore. This thing is fun. The other thing I got to say about this boat is, man, uh, look at that. I can just lean myself way the heck over on this boat and it's stable. It is solid on a secondary edge. Again, that classic Pungo hole design that I see on the bottom of this thing, that's what made the Pungo so popular because it still paddled well, but you could lean it way the heck over without tipping over. So comparatively to that, um, that Pelican, I mean, I like that Pelican, it felt great. And at that price and that weight, it was good. But on the water, this one is, is a touch better. If that one was a, a three-star review, this one would be a four-star review. This is just a little nicer. Foot pedals, backrest, uh, whole performance, outfitting, all better. The only complaint is just that small cockpit. 159 bucks. Next, I'm gonna take out the Perception Swifty. All right, again, this is my second time reviewing this kayak. I reviewed it once before in the top five under $500 that I did last year. And I was impressed with it, but I felt like it was a little bit of a bean pushing through the water. Now my filter is a little skewed because today, these are $300 and under kayaks. So my, my level of expectation goes way down with, uh, with these style of boats. One thing I'll say right off the bat is the foot pedals, the backrest is super tall on this one ergonomics feel really really good i'm kind of noticing see that i stopped paddling see what the boat does there it spins out that didn't happen in the in the pelican and in that little blade kayak i stopped paddling and the boat just glided straight again the, the whole design on this one's a little bit more bean shape is what i call it it's just rounded all over whereas that uh that blade actually has a really good looking hole a little bit more keel. Still has a good secondary edge here. But yeah, I think this one actually, surprisingly, takes a little bit more work just to keep it going straight. It just pushes a touch more water than the other boat did too, than the old blade. So it sure is hard to have a bad time when you're out here doing this. So pretty out here. At nine and a half feet, it's easy to spin around, easy to maneuver. All the boats are that way. You know, the longer the boat, the faster it's gonna cut through the water, right? The shorter the boat, the more maneuverable it's gonna be. So you gotta kinda figure out what sort of water you're gonna be in and what's your priority. If, you, if you're in flat water lakes like this one, where it's just a small body of water, you don't really need the speed because, you know, if I had an hour to kill, I could paddle around this whole thing twice. But if I was going out to say Whiskey Town Lake, where it's a little bigger body water and has some wind and some waves, I would definitely be looking at something longer, you know, 12, maybe even 14 feet if it's available. I know there's not a lot available in this under, you know, $300 price point. But again, if what you're doing is more open water stuff, 
you should spend a little bit more and get something that's more appropriate. I keep saying it, but again, these are close to shore boats. You don't want to paddle them further offshore than you want to swim back. So let's talk about kind of pros and cons. But I would say the pros to this boat, indestructible construction. This thing's going to last you forever. You can drag it. You can beat it up. It's going to it's gonna hold up to that. Overall comfort and fit of this boat is really good. The foot pedals, the backrest. You know, the bungees actually make sense. I've got a little spot on the dash. I can, I can put my paddle. You know, if I was doing a little fishing or whatever, I got my rod holders behind me. Um, the downside is, is this right here. When I stop paddling, the boat wants to kind of swing. I didn't notice that in the uh, in the Pelican or the the Blade. And I don't know. To me, if, if there's any sort of wind and you're struggling to control your boat, it can make kayaking a lot less fun if you're working hard to, uh, to keep the boat going straight where you want it to go. And those other two, I didn't even think about it. And again, you guys, my review might change if I was a 150 pound lady and not a 230 pound guy. And I think I said the same thing last time. I just feel like I push water in this and that the bow locks in and the stern's kind of loose. Um, with that being said, I felt too big for that blade and it tracked and glided better than this one. So take that for what it is. All right, so next up, I've got the Mustang by Pelican. Again, I got the pink one just cause why not? And this is basically the same as a Trailblazer. If you look at the hull designs, like from the waist down, it's exactly the same. This one just gets a refined deck. It gets a couple of rod holders. It gets that nice little, little uh, zipper hatch, a little bit better outfitting, knee pads. So I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like this one a lot cause I enjoyed that one. And just the added comfort and features of this one should be sweet. All right, again, the first test is stepping down into that cockpit. And you can see six foot two, I got plenty of room. And these have these nice little padded cushions. Nice job, Pelican. You know, a cheap upgrade. And I don't know how permanently attached they are, but man, they feel so much more squishy than any of the other boats I've been in. They should sell that as an aftermarket upgrade because I mean, that, that just upgrades your comfort level so much. Remember what I was saying about the boat going straight when I stopped paddling it? I get in the Pelican, I stop paddling, the boat continues to go straight. Maybe a little bit of veering, I mean, it is a 10 foot, but all in all, quite a bit straighter than that, uh, than that perception. So if I was in the market and I had a $300 budget for my kayak, obviously you gotta still get a paddle and you gotta get a life jacket. But I think this kayak paddles way nicer and has way more features and it's only 90 bucks more. So I get it, it's almost a third more if you're buying a $300 kayak, but I definitely feel like you're getting a third more features and benefits from this kayak. Nicer seat, dry bag, uh, better ergonomics in the cockpit with the little pads. I would definitely spend a little bit more and get this one if I was in the market. Well, this is my last kayak. I'm not ready to get off the water yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys for a little ride. I'm gonna go across Lake McCumber into where Battle Creek comes in and show you guys around a little bit because it's absolutely beautiful back there. And honestly, a little 10 foot kayak will be perfect for navigating through the little marshland. So let's go check it out. So we're pulling into Battle Creek here. And basically, this is where the creek comes into the lake. It's pretty wild, you guys. I can actually feel through the kayak, the water drop 20 degrees. Like my feet are freezing cold. This is just fresh snow melt coming down off the mountain. Look at all the wildflowers growing. It's so pretty back in here. Just like this lush mountain meadow with a little creek running right through the middle. And you guys, this is what it's all about. It's not about what kayak you're in. It's about getting out and enjoying the great outdoor. If this is a price point that allows you to get on the water and come out and enjoy places like this that are maybe right in your backyard that you never knew about, then I'm all for it. And if this video has inspired you, share it with us. I'd love to hear your stories about how maybe something we've done has affected you personally or gotten you into the sport or inspired you to, you know, to, to give kayaking a try. That's the kind of stuff that fuels me. It fuels my passion and we'd love to hear it. So go ahead and follow us on Instagram, tag us in any of your stuff at Headwaters Kayak, at Headwaters Adventure Company. We'd love to see what you're up to. So I'm gonna head back to the launch, give you guys my final thoughts and uh, we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so I kind of lined them up here, you guys. My least favorite to my most favorite. And, uh, and honestly, they were all fine. They all did a good job. There's certain things I like about the certain ones. And I'm just gonna walk you through, give you my thoughts. But let's start with this little Trailblazer 100. The reason I put this one as my least favorite, not because of how it paddles, because it paddles really good. And at 189 bucks, it's a good value. The only thing I really didn't care for this boat is that back area. And the fact that when water drains in, it's gonna drain into the cockpit and could potentially make for a dangerous situation. And I think for not that much more money, 
the outfitting, the ergonomics, the, the rod holders, everything about this for 90 bucks more is such a better product that I would really just lean people towards the, the Mustang. Uh, next over here, I put the Perception, and although I love the build quality, I love the seat. When I was paddling, it was probably my, my least favorite boat to, to paddle, which I'm kind of bummed to say that. And again, I think it's my weight. I think if you're a smaller paddler, you might have a different experience, but comparatively to the Pelican, uh, it did not paddle quite as good. The next up is the Bandit, and this boat was kind of meh for me. It didn't like, no fireworks went off when I paddled it, but it is very lightweight, it's stable, and it is sit on top. So it's a very safe boat for a family. So if I'm husband, wife, you know, they wanted to get a couple of these, and wanted to drag a kid around or a dog around, it's gonna be plenty stable and it's gonna be safe. Next up here is the Blade Kayak, and out of all the kayaks, this was my favorite one to paddle. This one was really, really impressive, a really nice, easy paddling boat. And at only 159 bucks, uh, that has to be on your short list. I mean, it is such a good little boat. The only complaint on this guy was the cockpit size, a little bit short in the cockpit. And I honestly think that if I, if it was mine, I might take a jigsaw and just buzz this out. Uh, other than that, I really like the seat. I like the adjustable foot pedals. I'm definitely a big fan of the Field and Streams blade. But the reason this one right here is my top choice is for a couple things. One, the ergonomics. It's got a nice seat on it. It's got those padded thigh braces that were really comfortable. And it's just a really great all around kayak. It's stable, it cuts through the water nice, it has good tracking. A lot of features at the price point, you know. It's little stuff, but I like that little dry bag back there. I like the little rod holders. Um, definitely a great entry level option. And again, under 300 bucks. You guys, so I hope you enjoyed this review. All the kites behind me were a blast to paddle. Like I said, some were a little bit better than others, but let's be honest, they're all under 300 bucks. And for what you're getting at that price is really, really cool. Um, you know, I've been in this sport a long time and a boat like this one right here would probably have cost me five, $600 just a few years ago. So price of coming down and you guys are the ones that benefit. So hopefully this video inspires you to get out, get a kayak, get paddling, and then definitely as you get into the sport, look for your local clubs, look for your local shops. Those are gonna be your community hubs for information, for classes, for events. There's so much to the sport and I wanna see you guys get the most out of it. If you're in the Northern California area, look us up, Headwaters Kayak. We have a shop in Redding, a Headwaters Adventure Company, a shop in Lodi, Headwaters Kayak. Lots of community events, full moon paddles, sunset paddles, all sorts of great things to get plugged into. And I gotta stop and just say thank you guys so much for watching the channel, subscribing to the channel. If you're not already, we hope you can call this place home, subscribe to our channels. We're doing all sorts of reviews. This is $300 and under, we'll do $500 and under, $1,000 and under, all the way up to you know $6,000 custom builds. We do it all. So subscribe to the channel, click that notification button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, this is Dan from Headwaters Kayak, wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.